with Wimbledon done and dusted for another year. Let's go through my predictions for the event. I went through them on the second channel. If you haven't followed that, link down in the description. Go subscribe to the second channel. Lots more content coming out there. It's not going to be on the main channel, but just like the French Open, I went through my Wimbledon predictions, and I've got to say straight away that, spoiler alert, they're not good. Let's start with the first one. So I think Sabalenka is going to do better than Rabakina at Wimbledon this year. Now I actually got this one right, which is a pretty good start, I guess. Uh, yep, Sabalenka went further than Rabakina. It was very close, though. They almost played each other in the semifinals. So the players I picked for the best qualities, I'm going to go with Andreva. It was the same pick that I picked at the French Open. And I'm going to go with Otter. So not terrible here. Andreva actually had a really good run. She almost made it to the quarterfinals, ended up losing in the fourth round to Madison Keys. But as for Otter, he only made the second round. Actually, no qualifiers really did well at Wimbledon. Mainly the big seeds and some of the unseeded players did well. So for the best country, I'm going to go with Russia this time. So this one, I was so, so close. Russia had one less win than America. America ended up having more wins. 27 in total on the men's side and the women's combined. And on the men and women's side combined for Russia, they had 26. So this is a new category. We've changed this with the fastest serve to the most aces for the tournament. I'm going to go with Sabalenka. I think she's going to do well here. And she's going to be the biggest server. And I'm going to go with her catch. So actually didn't do bad here. Her catch finished third, so I didn't get him right. But Sabalenka did finish on top of the ladies' aces rankings for this year. But probably helps that they both made far runs. Eubanks actually finished top of the men's rankings with the aces based on the fact that he got to play an extra match that her catch didn't. So for this one, I've got to go with Djokovic. I mean, he's the proven Wimbledon champion. <laughs> so I came down to the final match and I was so close to get this one right. Alcrez overtakes Djokovic. I should have maybe made it Djokovic Medvedev or something different. So the players that I think might go on an unseeded run, making it to the fourth round or better, I'm going to go with the fairy tale stories. Milos Raonic, who's back. <laughs> and Alina Svetolina, who did so well at the French Open. So we're getting 50 50 on this one. Svetolina made it to the semi final, so got her right. But Raonic lost in the second round. He just wasn't up for the tennis, I guess. Hasn't been back long enough to be able to play long matches. Ended up losing to Tommy Paul in the end. Probably should have picked Eubanks in the end. He won the tournament before Wimbledon, so probably should have picked him. So for the top 10 upsets for the tournament, I've got to go with Kasper Brood. He doesn't look like he really wants to play on the grass anyway, so I think he's going to lose in the first week out of the top 10. And I'm going to go with Jessica Bagula. <laughs> So I got Rude right. I think that was the most obvious pick of the whole bunch. But Pagula actually did pretty well. Made the quarterfinals. Probably should have gone with a Zachary or one of the other top 10 ladies. Uh, but they actually, the top 10 of the men and the women actually did really well this week. So the French Open, this was one of the most successful categories. And I somehow picked the two players that did really well unexpectedly as Dark Horses. This time I'm going to go with Keys. To go far at the tournament, she just won a tournament last week on grass. So I'm going to go with Keys, and I'm going to pick Quarter. So again, one out of two on this one. I got Madison Keys. She made the quarterfinals, had a very good run after making and winning a tournament last week. But Sebastian Coles lost in the first round. I don't know what the hell is going on. He calls himself the Wimbledon champion. He's going to be the Wimbledon champion. He talks himself up, losing the first round. I think he fooled a lot of us. So this one's really tough. Sviantec, Jabur, you know, Jabur is the better player, but she has the tougher draw. And Sviantec, you know, proven on grass a little bit over the last week. I'm going to go with Igor Sviantec. <laughs> so this was a little bit of a risky pick because we all know Jabur is so good on grass. And again, she makes the final. Sviantec losing in the quarterfinals. It's a little bit of a risky pick picking against uh, Jabur on grass, but she had a hard draw. She just proved me wrong and got all the way to the final, beating every single tough opponent. So for my hot take, my unpopular opinion for Wimbledon 2023, I reckon we're going to have a lot of randoms in the quarterfinals and massive carnage in the first week. A lot of top 10 players losing in that first week. <laughs> Probably one of my worst takes. Um, <laughs> it was not good. All the, most of the top 10 got to the semifinals and quarterfinals, and the men and the women are actually a really consistent tournament. But I said that, you know, we'd have probably more top 10 players losing in the first week. In the quarterfinals, six of the eight quarterfinalists with top 10 players on the men's side, and five out of the eight on the women's, so I can't call this a win. 
So picking the semi-finals is gonna be one of the hardest predictions to pick because I found out that the hard way of the French Open only getting one out of the four for each of the men and the women. But I'm gonna go with Sviantec versus Vekic in one of the semi-finals. I'm gonna go with Sabalenka versus Kvitova in the other. <laughs> on the men's side, I'm gonna go with Djokovic versus Sinner. And the other half of the draw, I'm gonna go with Medvedev taking on Runa. So I only got one out of those four on the ladies' side. Sabalenka, the reliable pick. Fiontek was almost there. Vekic had no chance. Kvitova lost to Jabir. But on the men's side, three out of four. Pretty happy with that. Almost got Runa as well. Had he somehow beaten Alcaraz. Of course, Alcaraz went on to beat them all, and I didn't pick him. So I got a three out of four on the men. That's better than what I did at the French. And the final category, who is going to win Wimbledon the most? I mean, everyone's got to pick, right? I'm going to go with Djokovic because that's, again, the boring answer. <laughs> And on the women's side, I'm going to go with Sabalenka. And maybe I should have stopped doing these videos after the French Open when I got them both right because I picked... Not that I didn't pick bad players. I mean, they both made it deep in the tournament. Djokovic making the final, lost to Alcaraz. Sabalenka lost to Jabir in the semi. So it's not like I picked the worst players, but I got two, uh, two L's on this one because they both lost... Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So there it is, they are my predictions, and it turns out that I did worse than the French Open, so I don't know if we'll do these again. Uh, maybe for the US Open, we'll do it again, and we'll see if I can get a little better than that, but, but let me know down in the comments below. How do you go with the predictions this year? Did you predict well, or were you as bad as me at predicting Wimbledon predictions this year? Because we did have a lot of random results, or maybe some players that had tough draws, like Jabir, doing well. I mean, Von Drusseva winning, who would have picked that? But uh, let me know down in the comments below. How'd you do with your predictions for Wimbledon this year?